Father, thank you so much for your Spirit's presence here this morning. Lord, without your Spirit's presence, this really is a complete waste of time because we, we need your presence and we need you to speak to us, Father. We thank you right now that you are a God who speaks to his people and we are a people who have ears to hear. And Lord, we're going to hear what you have to say and we're going to put it into practice in our lives, Father, because we want to be more like you in this world. We thank you for that ahead of time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, let me briefly just review the last few weeks uh, that I know Pastor's been going over in the series called Hymology. I know that in week number one, let me, let me actually test you and uh, see if I can embarrass anybody. Anybody remember what week one was about, what the name of the song that he went over was? Amazing Grace. Oh, it was ama- very good. It was Amazing Grace, right? And uh, he, Pastor talked about how God's grace is an amazing free gift to everyone, and it provides strength and security. That's what you guys talked about week one. Week number two, anybody remember? Anybody got your notes in front of you? What was week number two? Pastor says, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance was, was week number two, okay? And he talked about how assurance is found in knowing God, submitting to his will, being content, and sharing your story. Now, week number three, you guys get that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually go through week three and four real quick, so if, get ready. Week number three was not too many weeks ago. Anybody remember the song, week number three? That was last week. Very good. Hold on to that one. Because he lives, right? Because he lives. And he talked about how because he lives, our sins are, for, are my past is forgiven. I have hope and peace today and my future is secure. And then last week, I'll say it again, was joy unspeakable, right? And uh, pastor talked about how joy unspeakable living happens when we turn our attention to Jesus when we taste the living water, listen to the truth, worship Jesus, and tell others about it. So it's been a really great series. I've actually been here through a number of them. I've, of course, I've had the honor of uh, posting all of the videos to the YouTube channel, so I've been able to watch them as well. So I know what he's been preaching. It's been really great. This is week number five, and I'm going to talk about a song that you all know, and we sang this morning called Great is Thy Faithfulness. But before I jump into that, I just want to point out a couple of things about music that I, I know that you already know, but it's kind of fun to remind ourselves, because music is a powerful thing, isn't it? Music throughout all of history has been used to help us remember things. It's been used to help us express our feelings. It's been used to connect us with concepts and ideas and truths in a way that sometimes just spoken word alone can't do. You know that's true, right? In fact, you know that's why songs get stuck in your head, whether you want them to or not. And of course, you've all gotten that one silly song stuck in your head that you absolutely do not want in your head, but it gets stuck in there anyway. And what do you do? You make sure that your loved one has it stuck in their head too, right? I mean, I do that all the time. I will not tell you some of the ones that I try to stick in my kids' heads, but anyway. So let me just, let's just have a little bit of fun with this. When you are feeling different things, like when you are feeling happy, is there a song that comes to mind that you like to sing when you're happy? Anybody got a song? You are my sunshine... What a great song. Joy Unspeakable, very good. What, any other ones? Happy songs? No, it's not a happy group, okay. Or we all sing the same songs, okay? Well, let's, let's keep testing ourselves. How about if you feel patriotic, what songs come to your mind? God Bless America, right? Battle Hymn of the Public, yes, very good. Any other ones? Yep, I just think of Lee Greenwood every time I think of being patriotic, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, how about, okay, now, how about if you feel romantic? What, kind of, what song comes to mind? Come on. Any songs come to mind when you feel romantic? Gentlemen, you better have some answers here. The ladies are listening. What songs do you like when you feel romantic? Oh, let's, <laughs> let's get it on. Everybody bow your heads. We're going to go home early to think about something else. Man, he is. He's embarrassed, but he's leaning in closer. I can see him. He's like, hurry up, preacher. Um, What other songs? When you're feeling romantic, I heard a bunch of them. What were the other ones? No one's going to say anything now, I can tell. You're all embarrassed, but that's okay because I see a bunch of couples. Anyway, how about this? What if I were to sing the song? If I were to sing, uh, you got a friend in me. What movie do do you think about when I say, you got a friend in me? Very good. See, music works, right? I was hoping you weren't going to make me keep on singing. Um, how about if I were to talk about a movie where uh, there was two guys in there named Goose and Maverick, and they're going to buzz the tower. What movie am I talking about? And what song am I thinking of? See, look how much that, look at that. That is so good. 
How about now, let's see if who's in the generation that I grew up in. If I started singing Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Does anybody remember that? Schoolhouse Rock. Mm, we are on fire. Okay. So you can see how music is a powerful thing, right? And things stick in your head whether you want them to or not, because some of you are still thinking of Let's Get It On, and other ones on Conjunction Junction. So we're just going to try to get another song in there instead. But it works, doesn't it? Music really, really works. Music sticks things in your head, and it's a powerful thing. And music helps us remember things that we couldn't remember before. How many, I don't know why this is especially a guy thing. I'm not really sure. But I know that for me, I can remember things in songs that are incredibly not important. And I can't remember really important things. Guys, you know what I'm talking about? In fact, let, okay, are there any guys in here that not only can you remember lyrics from your favorite song, but you can remember all the band members' names in that band? You're po- pointing at husbands. Okay, see, right? Okay, so just you and me for a second. So you know what I'm talking about. You can name the drummer and the bass player and the guitar player, and you're thinking this is completely useless. Can I possibly make some money doing this? Like, can I be the keeper of odd knowledge and get paid for that? No, but apparently I can't figure it out. You can't be in the circus and just name bands. That doesn't really work. Um, but music helps us remember. Music helps us express our feelings. And music can also bring us peace. Have you had that song that when you're really anxious and you hear that song, it just brings your heart peace? You know what I'm talking about? Music does that. Um, in fact, David in the Bible had the ability to do that. He brought peace to Saul when he played music, didn't he? And music can lift us up when we're down. If you got, now I don't work out, obviously, but those of you people who do work out, you got your workout music, right? Like you don't play, you probably don't play symphonies when you're working out because it just doesn't get you there, right? You gotta, you gotta some pumping song to get you worked up. And there's music that can also get you moving when you're a little lethargic and when you're down. Music sticks in our head for good and for bad, But music is an amazing thing, and music is absolutely a gift from God. And it really is. And it is a tool that he wants us to use. So our hymn today that we're going to talk about is Great is Thy Faithfulness. And as I've been reading over this hymn, preparing for today, I realized that when I read it, that in my mind, this song is a response to who God is. That's when I read that. Because I I read those words, and I'll read it here to you in just a moment. But when I read those words, I I feel myself responding to God saying, yes, this is who you are. This is what you've done. Let me read this song to you and read the lyrics to you. You already know them, but I'll read them to you again. It's, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. So you're saying, God, you are so great. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. That, I love that one. I love that one. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their course above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. And this is a great verse. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and a bright hope for tomorrow, blessing all mine with 10,000 beside. When you hear that song, when you sing that song, what what do you think of? You think of how great God is, don't you? You think of all these things he's done for you. And when it talks about uh, springtime and harvest, when it talks about all the different uh, seasons, when it talks about um, nature witnessing to the greatness and faithfulness of God, it's a powerful song. And I've sung that, like a lot of you, I've sung that song throughout my entire life, but I have a tendency to not connect with songs after a while. If I don't be careful, I just blah, blah, blah. I just say words. And I think it's really important to connect with the words that you're singing. So before we jump into the rest of this, let me just stop and cover what may be obvious, but maybe not. Let's talk about the word faithfulness or faithful. What does faithful mean? Let me give you a dictionary definition. Faithful is an adjective, and it means having or showing true and consistent support or loyalty. Having or showing true and consistent support or loyalty. It means deserving trust, Faithful means keeping your promises or doing what you are supposed to do. Faithfulness speaks of being stable, dependable, and steadfast. When you see those words, 
do you not agree with me that that is actually the definition of God? That is who God is. In fact, you could say, if you looked up in the dictionary, faithfulness, it could just say, see God. Right? Because that's what he is. I'm that, like, you know, 15 seconds at a time every couple weeks. Kidding, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as faithful as God is, okay? And you aren't either. But that is a goal that we shoot for, but that's who God is. God is absolutely faithful. And this song is all about reminding ourselves what God has done, who he is, and who he will be all at the same time. He has been faithful. He is faithful. He will continue to be faithful because that's who God is. Because he did, he will. Because he was, he is. That's who God is. And when you look through the scriptures and you see that God has done something in the past, you can also know that he's going to do that today and in the future because God never changes. Mm. He is faithful. And the more that we recognize God's faithfulness, the more that I believe we will experience God's faithfulness. Let that sink in for a second because I want to talk about that. The more that we recognize God's faithfulness, the more that I believe we will experience God's faithfulness. Or let me say it this way. The more that I see God as he really is, the more of him I will experience. The more I see God as he really is, the more of him I will experience. Think about that in human terms. You don't know me really well at all, so you don't even really know that you can trust me. Gary's getting to know me. We've known each other for a couple years, but not, not our whole lives. But the more we get to know each other, the more we know I can trust him and he can trust me. I promise that I'm not as faithful as God, but you've already figured that out. <laughs> That's okay. But the more that you experience Mark, the more that you can know how faithful Mark is. But if you don't know Mark, you don't know how faithful he is. The more that you experience God, the more you will be able to understand how faithful he really is. So today I want to give you just a few things that might help you if you look at your life and you say, you know what, I need to experience more of God's faithfulness. I want to give you just a couple ideas or ways that you can experience more of God because ultimately, experiencing God's faithfulness is actually just experiencing God because he is faithful. So I want to give you just a couple ideas of ways that you can experience more of God. So if you want to experience more of God, you can start, number one, here's the first way. You can start by recognizing God's faithfulness all around you. Recognizing God's faithfulness. This just came to my mind now, but how many of you have maybe a grandma? I don't know why it's always grandmas and not grandfathers, but you all know what I mean. How many of you guys have a grandma that's been following the Lord their whole lives? You know somebody like that? Am I the old? Me and you. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, we'll pray for the rest of you. You, And you ladies are going to grow into those grandmas, right? You're going to grow into those grandmas that are following God their whole lives. But when you think of grandma, she sees God hand, God's hand everywhere, doesn't she? I mean, when, when, you're, when I talk to my grandmother, this is really embarrassing because it's my grandmother, but I'm a typical man. I have to ask my wife. My grandma Holland is how old now? 94, okay? She's, and she's been following the Lord pretty much her entire life. And you know what's really cool? When you talk to Grandma Holland, I, I love this. The older she gets the more she just trusts and believes God. And this is another amazing thing. Those of you guys, who, those of you who are young may not know what I'm talking about, but the little ones are a little older like me. You'll get this. When you were young, you knew everything, right? And then as you started getting older, you didn't know less. You just realized you didn't know what you thought you knew before, right? And so you've learned to say the, right, the phrase, I don't know. And you're not embarrassed by it anymore as you get older. When you were a kid, you just had to say you knew everything. And what I love about Grandma Holland is if I ask her about something, she might say, I don't know, but she'll follow up with, but I know God is good. And you know what? It's funny is she's getting to know the most important thing as she gets older. It doesn't really care so much about the other stuff, but she is experiencing God on a daily basis because she's recognizing God's faithfulness all around her. I'm going to teach you a couple things to help you remember. The, I'm going to have four points today, and the first one is recognizing God. And that's, I'm basically going to give you the idea of using your eyes and looking around. Looking around and recognizing God's faithfulness all around you because that teaches us to see God's hand around us. When we need to experience God's faithfulness, one of the ways we can do that is to recognize what he's already doing around us. 
for nature, for example. Did anybody see the beautiful sunrise this morning? It was gorgeous. Uh, apparently that happens every morning, but I'm not usually awake to see it. Uh, that's what I've heard. Uh, man, you guys are, are you all awake really early except for me? I, I've heard, you know, my wife leaves before the crack of dawn, you know, and uh, I just ask her to pull the, the curtain shut so that sunrise doesn't bother me. <laughs> uh, but God is faithful, and you can see that in nature. Psalm 19, verse 1 says, The heavens proclaim the glory of God, the skies display his craftsmanship. Romans 1.20 says, For since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. Through everything God has made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his internal power and divine nature. We can see God through all of creation. But let me ask you this. Besides creation, has God been faithful to you lately? Has he? I'm going to put you on the spot. Somebody tell me, how has God been faithful to you lately? Somebody tell me. You, you woke up this morning, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. What else? What else has God done in your life personally? What has he done? Anybody had God show up in your life? He's given you peace. Man, you know what? That is not something we should blow by. That is, that is a big deal, isn't it? He's given you peace. Anything more specific? Has God done anything in your life that you want to mention? Has God showed up in your finances? Has he showed up at your job, your family, anybody? say it. I promise. Somebody, somebody else tell me what God has done. Oh, well, in fact, I'll, I know God's doing something here at this church uh, with the plumbing. Uh, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's okay. Um, you know what? I, I will even, I'll go ahead and say this. I actually think that I, I know that God knew what, what, what all was going to happen. He always does, right? And he knew that there was going to be a little hiccup with stuff this morning. He knew that I was going to come and speak so you didn't have to do that. You may not understand how big a deal that is, but if you've got to carry the weight that your pastor does all the time and prepare for sermons, I think it's miraculous in itself that there was a little thing that he had to deal with and he did not have to preach this morning. I think that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I wasn't the reason that the, the plumbing happened. Uh, I, I promise I didn't do that, but that's okay. But number one, the, way that you, the first way you can experience more of God is to start by recognizing God's faithfulness. That's recognizing God's faithfulness. Number two, if you want to experience more of God, start by recognizing God's faithfulness. And then number two, remember all he's done. So recognize and remember. Boy, I, again, I'll pick on the men because I know we're this way. Ladies, you're not as bad. But men, we have terrible memories. I don't know what that is. I, okay, sorry. I have a terrible memory. I don't know about the rest of you men. But we have terrible memories. And it's awful because when God does stuff in our lives, it's so simple to forget what he's done. I have story after story after story of God showing up in a particular way in my life, and then a few weeks or a few months or maybe a few years later, he shows up again in a very similar way, and I go, huh, he, he taught me that lesson before, but I didn't learn it, so he shows up and does it again because he's good like that. He, he really is. It's also amusing later. It's not amusing at the time because I, I feel like a doofus. But, but you know, I, I love when God shows up over and over again. And I want to give you one quick reference in Scripture about when God shows up and what he wants people to do when he shows up. And that's in Joshua. If you have your Bibles, if you have your phones, whatever you use, turn to the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verse 1. I'm just going to read this to you. Uh, what's happening right here in this story is the uh, people of Israel had just crossed the Jordan River, and the Jordan had just parted, and the ark had been taken. In. They walked in with the ark, and the water parted, and all of the people went across the Jordan. And this is what it says in chapter 4 of Joshua, verse 1. It says, When all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose twelve men, one from each tribe. Tell them, Take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Now, let me just ask you, what did I just say? Where, where are the stones coming from? In the middle of the Jordan, right? Where it's currently dry, but it's usually wet, usually underwater, right? So right then he says, go and get some rocks from the middle of the miracle that I'm doing right now and take it out of the Jordan and stack it up next to the, next to the shore, because what he's basically saying is, when this water comes back again, you are going to forget. And so I want you not, because if he had said just go make a stack of stones, that would have been one thing. But he said go make a stack of stones from the middle of the Jordan that you could not normally have gotten. And I want you to put it up over here so that when the water comes back and you try to convince yourself it wasn't a miracle, 
you will tell your children, because that's what he says. He says, carry them out and pile them up at the place where you camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each one of you will pick up a stone and carry it in your shoulder and 12 stones in all, and we'll use those one for each uh, of the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 6. We will use these stones to build a memorial, and in the future, your children will ask you, what do those stones mean? And then you can tell them, they reminded us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. These stones will stand as a memorial forever. What God is saying is, I know you're going to forget, so go and do something to help you remember. And when you want to experience the faithfulness of God in your life, one of the things you need to do is do something to remind yourself of what he's already done. So first of all, recognize what he's doing around you. Number two is remember what he, all he has done. So if you want to experience his faithfulness, you want to make sure that you don't forget the miracles of the past in your present situation. Let me say that again. Don't forget to connect the miracles of the past with your present situation. I can't tell you how many times. Now, see, I, I, can, I can tell you what you need to do easier than I can tell myself. You know how that works, right? But when I'm counseling with people, a lot of times I will say, hey, don't forget that God showed up in the past. He can do that again. So remind yourself of what God's done in the past. In fact, in our song, there's a line that says, As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. So if he has been faithful in the past, he's going to be faithful today and in the future. So if you want to experience more of God, you start by recognizing, by remembering, and number three, expressing. Expressing what God means to you. So we're going to recognize with our eyes, we're going to remember with our mind, we're going to express with our mouth what God means to you. The truth of God from our own mouth builds our faith and teaches us gratitude. Because here's what I know. My ears hear what my mouth says. And my heart starts to believe what comes out of my mouth. See, you know this is true in other, other parts of life because when you hear someone say, I'm no good, what do you usually say? You say, don't say that. Well, why do you say that? Why, why do you tell them not to say it? Well, because it's not true and you don't want them to believe it. And how many times have you heard somebody that they keep saying something negative about themselves over and over and over until finally they believe it? And it doesn't even have to be true, but they believe it anyway. You, saw, you see what I'm saying? That, oh my goodness, is that not more true than uh, about us and God? We need to be saying what's true. And so if you want to see God's faithfulness, one of the things you need to do is to express his truth about you and about your situation. And let your own ears hear your mouth. Let me bring it down to a more uh, regular situation. Men, you should be saying wonderful things about your wives. Wives, you, you should be saying great things about your husbands for two reasons. One, because it's nice. And two, it's either true or you want it to be true. And I promise you, I'll, again, I'll speak for men. If ladies, if you will keep telling us how great we are, guess what we have a tendency to do? We'll have a tendency to be great. Because we want to live up to the words you've said. Now, God doesn't have to live up to our words, but you get what I'm saying. The importance of the words out of our mouth say good things, say true things. So if you want to experience God's faithfulness, express what God means to you from your own mouth and build your own faith. One of my uh, pastor friends always says this phrase. He says, thankfulness is the key to more. Thankfulness is the key to more. And if you're not sure if I'm, if I'm telling the truth, anybody have children in here? Let me see your hands. Who has children? When your kids are thankful, how much more likely are you to want to do more good things for them? A lot, right? But when they're not thankful, mm, yeah, not so much, right? Fortunately, God has got all kinds of mercy and grace, and he does stuff for me when I don't deserve it, when I'm not thankful. But God does, however, move more. I promise, he moves more on the behalf of people who are thankful. He does. Because that tells a lot about who you are and where your heart's at. So we want to say what God says about us, but we also need to say what God says about himself. Lamentations 3.24 says this, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. 
Man, there are days when I need to say that the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. And sometimes I say that because I believe it. And sometimes I say it because I need to believe it. Right? You follow me? Some days my heart's not there, but it needs to be. So I'm going to keep saying it till my heart gets there. And sometimes I'm going to say it out of my own mouth so my ears hear it so my heart gets it. And you know, out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, I've got to also tell you that my heart gets filled up with the things my mouth says. And you already know that, but if you're not sure, when you start listening to music that's a bunch of garbage, guess where it eventually comes out? Ah, so it is your mouth does matter. And you know this already. So, if you want to experience more of God, start by recognizing, remembering, and expressing. And then number four, this is huge for so many of us. Start by resting in who he is. And man, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but in 2016, there's a lot of us that have forgotten how to rest. And I don't mean just taking a break. I also mean resting, meaning it's not your job, it's God's let him do it. Rest. Take a break, but also stop doing the job that was never yours to begin with. And when you learn how to do that, you're going to experience more of God's faithfulness because you are not doing somebody else's job. You are doing yours. And your job sometimes is just to shut up and trust. This teaches us where to put our trust. In our song, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Sometimes you just need to rest and let God be the provider because that's who he is. He is more than enough. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need your help. In fact, have you ever found yourself being in his way? And then he has to, uh, this is a joke. You don't know me that well. I joke a lot. Sometimes he has to be more than more than enough because I've made more work. And God's like, I got it. I had it before you started. And I still got it, but now I got to do more work because you helped. You ever had your kid help you with dinner? <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> Doesn't really help. Well, my, my daughter's 15. She's now helpful. She's actually making dinner, which is awesome. But there was a time when your help wasn't quite so helpful. And, that, and all the wives to their husbands said, Amen. Husbands, stop helping. Isaiah 26.3, you will keep in perfect peace all of those who trust you, all of those whose thoughts are fixed on you. I think today for some of you, today God is calling you just to rest and let him be God and trust in him and put your thoughts on him and let him show up and be faithful in your life. Philippians 4 says, don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. Wait, let me, let me read that again. Hmm. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace. Not and. Then. Tell God what you need. Thank him. And then you'll experience his peace. So guess what? If you need peace, where should you start? Tell him all he's done and say thanks. And you're going to start experiencing peace like you haven't before. Because he will show up and show off. He loves to do that. I'm going to read this one last scripture. Lamentations 3 says, The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I don't know about you. I'm really, I stink at being quiet. I stink at waiting. If you're, if you're not sure, if you do, get in the car and see how long it takes you to turn the radio on or get on the phone or something. It's, we just, we're not good at waiting. But we need to be. We need to be good at waiting and resting in who God is. I'll give you this one last thought, and then we're going to close for today. God is amazing. He does give us everything we need, and that's awesome. But what's even more amazing is that God gives, him, gives us himself. L let, let me talk about that a little more. We love God for the things he does, but we love him even more for who he is. Do you, how do you feel when somebody just wants to be with you because of the stuff you give them? You want them to love you for who you are because it's who you are that causes you to give. 
It's who you are that causes it. It's who God is that causes him to be faithful and to give you things that you need. But we need to fall in love with who God is, not just what he gives. I make the joke all the time that God's not the, you know, the divine uh, slot machine in the sky where I just throw my prayer in and get my blessing out. Except, yet that's how we treat God so often, don't we? Oh, you know what? Lord, I need, I need healing. Here's my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Boom. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, he's good like that. But that's not the relationship we're looking for. I want to be close to God. And then, oh, by the way, all his blessings come with that. But I want more of him, not just what he gives. I want his heart, not just his hand. So if you want to experience more of God's faithfulness, I want to encourage you to do this. Remember, or you want to recognize, you want to remember, you want to express, and you want to rest. So allow me to pray with you guys this morning for just a moment. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, thank you so much for being a faithful God. Lord, your faithfulness just completely blows us away.